All right, so I've alluded to this a bit, um, but sometimes we might have a single line of code or a single list operation um, that's not a step in, in and of itself. It actually um, is not bounded by the list size. Um, you know, it gets slower when it's bigger um, or, or it doesn't. So what I might actually do rather than um, just think about in terms of, you know, what lines are steps or not, I might think about the complexity of a step and those that are bounded I might call those constant time or order of complexity one, right? I can always multiply by C, right? So I was trying to have some fixed amount of work. There's an upper bound on it. Um, and then other operations, maybe they depend on, on the size of the list um, where it is the, the length of the list. And so what I want you to do is I want you to look at all of these and um, all these operations. And we're gonna try to think about which ones are constant time and which ones are order, order N. And so for this, I have a concrete example down here. I have this list L. And remember that all lists are stored within somewhere, somewhere within a process's address space, right? So I have an address space here. And so if I have this list A, B, C, D, maybe it's something like this. I have A, B, C, D. And you know, I, I can think of my address space as this giant list. Uh, but this list, the L list within here, right? I guess L. L starts here, and so I have my indexing like this, right? These are not details that you have to think about when you're programming in terms of, well, where does my list do uh, end up in here? Python takes care of that for us, uh, but we do have to think about it a little bit in terms of, of performance when we think about how fast or slow something is. And, um, and so let's just start with these two. I'm gonna walk through two examples and then you're gonna have to think about the rest. But for these two, um, in this first case, let's say I'm inserting, um, let's say I'm inserting E um, at the end, right? So if I'm appending, that goes to the end. And then at the beginning, I'm inserting, let's say that X is F, right? So this is what I'm inserting, E and F. And what happens? Well, I'm gonna do the append first, right? So the append, well, what happens there? I, I, I look kind of through the different points in the list and I look and well, guess what? There's a nice empty spot at the end. So I put E here and that's at index four and, and that happens fast, right? So that is an example. Um, this, is a, this is a fast operation. It's, it's order, it's order one. Right, because I didn't, you know, it doesn't matter how long the list is, right? It's the same amount of work to add something at the end. Now, in contrast, uh, when I'm inserting something at the beginning, that means that F needs to go here at position zero. And well, what does that mean? That means that I need to bump A out to there, position one, right? A bumps from position zero to one, which means B has to pump to position C, has to pump to position D, right? You, you see that I have to move everything over. And so really when I wanna add something at the beginning, um, I have to move everything else over. So the more things there are, the slower it is, right? If there are N items, I have to move N items. And so this is a slow, this is a slow operation. And, and I guess I'm circling, it says to circle those you think are order in. So this is an example of an order in operation. It's slow. And, and why is it useful to know for all these? When you're programming, you want to avoid doing um, order in operations, especially as you start dealing with more data, right? So gaining intuition for this is going to help you um, write faster code. So pause me for a moment and, and, and go through the rest of these and, and kind of at least guess for each of these, which are order in or not, and, and then we'll talk through it. Okay. I'm assuming you paused me and, and thought about it and wrote down something, and now we're gonna talk through it. And so, well, let's go through, I guess, popping first, right? So I guess I'm popping either at the, the beginning um, or the end, and maybe not surprising, well, popping at the beginning is very slow, right? Because, well, if I were to delete something here at the beginning of the list, then I also have to kind of shift everything back, right? have to shift everything back, right? So that would be just as bad as really kind of inserting at the beginning. Whereas removing from thing, something from the end, no problem. That, that would be a fast operation, removing something from the end. 
Okay, um, what about these? What if I want to find the value at the beginning? Well, it, it, it turns out that's fast. I just look and I grab it. And um, so I don't want you to get the impression that doing things at the beginning of the list is always slow, right? Changing things, you know, at, well, I shouldn't even say changing things. Well, if I change, if I change, for example, A to Z, that'd be fine. But adding or removing at the beginning of the list is slow. Just looking at things or updating them is, is fine. Um, so, so that would be fine. That's that's fast. Um, what about this? I have um, L two dot extend L. You know, people often forget the difference between append and extend. When when I'm appending, I'm adding one more item. But when I'm extending, I really want to say that I want to copy everything from L over to L2, right? So you can imagine maybe way out over here, I have L2, right? And really what I'm saying is I kind of want to copy all of L over here and, and kind of add it to the end of wherever L2 is. And so this is something that's definitely, as L gets bigger, um, it's going to get slower. Now, extend adds to the end of L2, so it turns out that the, the size of L2 does not matter, but the size of L does, right? As L gets bigger, this gets slower. It's an order in operation. Okay, um, what about this? Uh, if I want to get the max. Um, well, we've found ways to get the max before with a big loop, right? We loop over all the items until we find the biggest. And it turns out that that's what this function is doing. That one line of code um, is just a loop in disguise. Um, what about this one? Um, X equals sum. That's another loop in, in disguise. Uh, what about this one? This one throws a lot of people. I want to get the length of it. Um, well, what's happening there? Uh, well, it turns out that we're keeping little statistics, right? So for this list, right? So for this list L, you know, I keep a note somewhere. Maybe at the beginning, right? Maybe I keep a note that this has a length of, of five, right? I have like a little statistic here. And then if I insert something, maybe I update that to a six. And, and so actually getting the length is really fast, right? Because I just have to look at this here. Um, you can imagine them having done that for the sum or the max, right? I mean, you could imagine every time you add or remove something, you would update that. They didn't do that. So at least for Python lists, constant time operation for length, and then these other two, max and sum, are, are slow. Um, what about this one? When I say X and L, um, let's say, uh, well, let's say that X was A. Um, I guess I actually find that right here at the beginning. So then that'd be pretty fast. But what we really want to do um, when we're doing these kinds of things is we want to talk about the worst case. And the worst case is that I have to check each item, right? So I guess the worst case is that X is something that's not even in the list, or, or maybe it's the last item like E, right? And in, in that worst case, then again, I have one of these loops um, in disguise. All right, so make a note of this, things to avoid inserting at the beginning, hopping from the beginning, um, extending, finding the max or sum or searching for something, and then see the other things that are fast, right? Making changes to the end are fast, um, finding something in the list at a given position, that actually turns out to be fast um, uh, no matter what the index is in Python, that's fast, and, and the length is fast. So try to write code that uses fast things. Now, uh, I feel like I could have given you a, a, the impression that all of the things I circled are equally slow, right? They're all order n. And really, somebody who's trying more mathematical or theoretical uh, might be satisfied with that. Uh, but I also want you to be kind of a, a practical person who's always measuring what you're doing, right? Because it, it turns out that some order n things might be slower or faster um, than others. And so I'm going to actually head over here to... Hopefully this works when I switch. I'm gonna head over here to a Jupyter notebook and I'm actually gonna do some measurements here to compare a few of these operations. What am I gonna do? I'm gonna do, um, you know, what is the cost of sum, max, length, and I guess I'll also do um, kind of a, um, I'll do like extend. What is the cost of these? 
And, um, and remember that, let me just make a note here. Um, these are all linear time. And this is constant time. And remember that linear time just means it's order n. This means it's order one. All right, so that's what I wanna measure here. <clears throat> and what we're gonna see is that these three things actually uh, kind of vary a lot. And so this is kind of, um, I, I wanna kind of show you how to do these little mini experiments to measure these things. And then hopefully you keep that with you. And when you're writing other code, you'll kind of do these little experiments and get a sense for what's fast and what's slow. So, so here's what I'm gonna do. Um, I'm gonna create a data frame uh, for my measurements. And I guess to do that, I have to say from pandas import data frame. And you know, the other thing I may want to import is um, time, right? So I'm going to say from the time module, import the time function. And so I'm going to take a bunch of time measurements with this, and then I put them in this data frame, and then use that to create some plots. Um, so I'm going to do that. And why is this slow? Let me just do a kernel. Okay, there we go. That's fine. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I may have a list. Maybe I'll start it off being empty. And I may have a loop, right? So I may have a loop where, uh, well, let's just say for i in range 10. And well, I guess I'll just append something to my loop or append to my list each time, right? And let me just print this. Okay, so, so I kind of start with a small list and I get a bigger and bigger list. And, and what I want to do here is for each size, measure speed of the operations, right? That's my goal. Okay, and um, so, so I start with a small list and with a big list. And so, so maybe let me just start with one operation. And, um, and maybe for that, I'll just do the sum. All right, so I, I can say something like x equals sum of my list. And, and now even as I'm doing this, I realize it's kind of silly that um, I'm appending strings. So I guess I'll just say like um, uh, 320. I'm gonna do that. And I can actually get some sort of number there. Let me, let me just kind of see that this is working. Make sure I'm measuring something real. Um, I am, right? So I'm able to do that sum. And, and my assumption is, is that after I've added more things to that list, doing this sum is going to be a little bit a bit slower, right? So I don't actually want to care what the sum is. What I want to do is I want to see how long does that take. So um, just, you know, I guess before I've done examples where I'll say something like time dot time, and that's because I only did from time, or I, I just did import time. When I do this import style, now I can just directly call the, the time function, and then I can um, do it again. And um, maybe let me just print these two things. So T1, T0. Right, so, so I can see this was how many seconds it has been since 1970 before I called this. And this is how many seconds since that time, uh, since 1970 after I called it. So if I want to, I can just subtract these and I can figure out how long, how long it took to run, run this little snippet of code. Okay, so what I wanna do is I wanna put these in my data frame and let me, I'm just gonna kind of consolidate into one big cell down here, if that's okay with everybody. Um, what, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say that, you know, have one, you know, for each row, I'm gonna have, um, you know, a different list size. And for each column, different operation. And then each cell is gonna be how long it took. So that's gonna be my performance measurement, okay? So, so what I want to do is I have this performance measurement here and um, well, I want to stick it inside of this data frame. And so, well, how do I do that? Um, I can do it like this. I can say data frame dot location uh, equals something. And when I do dot location, what do I do? I say both the row index and the column index. Okay, so let me think a little bit about this. I guess I want, the row basically be the list size, right? So for this, I'll just say, um, I'll say, well, what is the length of, I, of L? And then for the column, I guess I want that to be the operation I'm doing, which is a sum, right? So I guess I'll say sum here. 
And then what is this? This is my actual measurement, how long it took. So I'll do this. I'll put this right to here. And let's try to do that. <coughs> and, and that worked just fine. So after this is all done, let me take a look at my data frame. And I see, cool, I, I get all these little measurements. And, um, and they're all pretty, pretty small numbers. Okay. Um, now, I'd like to have somewhat bigger numbers. And so I, I can see that, well, this is how many seconds I have. Um, if I had milliseconds, I multiply it by a thousand. Uh, if I if I was doing microseconds, I'd multiply it by a million. And so I can just see like if I want to kind of have numbers like, you know, near one or so, um, I could be multiplying these by one million. Right, remember this is scientific notation. I could do could do this six zeros or just say e6 um and then up here right i need to make a note this is in microseconds okay great and then i can actually see well it's taking about one microsecond to get the sum so so if you don't mind i am just trying to copy and paste this maybe there's a more elegant way but um i'm not trying to do it for this demo and um and what am I going to do here? I'm going to do the different operations. So I have the sum. Uh, let's get the max. What were the other things I wanted to do? I wanted to get, um, I guess I wanted to get the length, right? And length. And then what else do I have? I guess I also had, um, I also had extend, and, and I guess for extend, I actually need another, my mouse is kind of acting weird here. I guess for extend, I need to have another um, list that I'm actually extending, right? So I'm gonna paste all of this one more time. And, um, and maybe what I'll do is I'll just create that list here. I'll say L2 equals an empty list. And then I'll say L2 dot extend L. Right, that's what the extend operation is. I wonder why I can't click that. It's very strange. Um, anyway, so I'm gonna do that and run it again and get my data frame. Uh, and this all looks pretty good. And kind of my intuition is that when I have a bigger list, that these numbers should get slower. And, and what you can see is that it's really not, right? I mean, it's kind of steady through here. And that's because 10 is a really small size for a list, right? Everything is super fast. And so once I have this code working, I guess maybe I'll crank this up a thousand and now i can actually kind of see well you know if i have a small list all these things are fast um as i have a bigger list some of these things get slower and um and some do not okay so let me think about this i just want you to look at the code again for a moment before we move on right let's just review what we've done i created an empty data frame that's kind of rare, right? Usually we create data frames from like a CSV file, but we're creating our own measurements now. And then I use this to insert values at specific cells. And so I looped to get a thousand different rows. And then for the four columns, well, I just inserted my four measurements each time. <clears throat> so I got this data frame at the end. And the beauty about uh, Pandas is that if I have a data frame, I can say dot plot dot line. And what's going to happen? Well, I'm gonna get four different lines for each of the columns. And then for each of those uh, things, I'm gonna get the X values from the index and the Y values from the actual cells. I'm gonna do that. And um, I kind of get this very noisy plot, right? So a lot's happening here. Um, other things that are happening, I can see that the font's really small, which I don't like. So, so let me just do this. I'm gonna say import, matplotlib, matplotlib.rc, params, font.size equals, um, let's throw it 18, so you can kind of see what's happening. Um, so it's very noisy. Um, maybe that we actually try to simplify this a bit too. Um, I can kind of crop out some of those outliers, right? So I'm going to say ax and then say, AX .set x limb, and I'll just draw from uh, 0 to um, 15 for this. And Y, well, I guess I meant the Y limit. 
and, and I can actually see something that's happening here. And, and so first off, I mean, this should agree with what we said earlier, right? I said that the length was constant time and you can see that hopefully now. It doesn't matter if um, I have a list with zero items or a thousand items, getting the length is pretty fast. And then all the other ones are linear time, right? It's order n and I have three roughly straight lines for these three different things. But well, what I want you to notice is that they're definitely not equal, right? Max is a lot slower than extender sum, right? So if you were a mathematical type, it would be almost disappointing to um, walk away feeling like, oh, they're all order n, they're all the same. No, uh, we care about actual wall clock time, how many seconds it take to run. So I'm gonna go, go with that. Okay. Um, so I, I'm almost to the end here, uh, but you know, last year somebody asked a good question, which I want to answer now. They asked, why is it so noisy? Why do I have all these spikes? And there's different reasons for that. I'll just give you one example to kind of, um, uh, to kind of um, walk away with. And that goes back to what we learned in the first lecture about operating systems. Remember that um, I might only have one CPU on my computer or on my virtual machine, and only one process can run on it um, at a time. And the operating system decides what process that is, right? So kind of this code I'm running the notebook right now is one process. Uh, maybe I have other processes running on my virtual machine, checking for updates or whatever. And, and so what could happen, right? I, I feel like all, I, I kind of have all this code here that's um, running, but what can totally happen is the operating system would say, you know, switch to a different process. And then, you know, that could run a while, right? And then, and then maybe the OS says, switch back to Python code. And I can't even really tell this happens, right? This just happens automatically from my perspective. But what I'm gonna see is that from this time to this time, even though I only see this in the middle, well, there's a bunch of other stuff happening and it gets really slow. And that's one of the reasons when you look down here, um, sometimes I get unlucky when I'm doing my experiment. I get this very large number uh, because something like that happened. Um, notice that the luck never goes the other way, right? There's nothing that I get lucky and it's somehow magically really fast, right? So you might want to take a lot of measurements and, and we aren't going to worry about that too much here, but you can kind of get a sense of the actual pattern and, and kind of see what is noise and not here. All right.